can you tell me about why uh, why reporters need press passes from the NYPD? Luckily, that might change, uh, but it, it's a policy that I've long had a problem with, and you know, it, it it goes back in New York. It goes back decades. I actually am trying to remember when it began, but you know, at, at some point, basically, this system was created where, in order to be able to cross a police or a fire line, you needed a pass. And that was the press pass, and so. That is the like utilitarian purpose of the press pass in New York City. It's supposed to enable you to cross a police line if there's like a crime scene or investigation or a fire line. And then really the, the, the scope of it just expanded where, you know, they would ask for it if you want to like enter City Hall, if you want to go to these various places. Now, you and all normal people would say, well, why is the NYPD authorizing that? Why can't some outside entity do it? Why can't even the mayor's office do it, right? Um, and I agree with you. I, I think the system was is idiotic. You know, I, I, I wrote a piece for that. I wrote, I wrote a piece thing in 2016 about that, if I recall. And, and now finally, kind of the post George Floyd era, that policy has been reevaluated. And, and Bill de Blasio, the outgoing mayor, has said he would move those functions to his office. I, I don't know if that's happened yet. There's no evidence it has. But, you know, it, it was really a, 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 a Kafka-esque uh, quest to get a New York City press pass. You would go to this, you know, Citadel where the NYPD is headquartered across from City Hall. Um, you go through reams of security and then you had to present to a desk officer, you know, it's in the Department of uh, you know, Public Information, five stories of yours that proved you wrote about the city. And what made it Kafka-esque was if you read the directions of what you had to bring, each story had to show you would have required a press pass to do them. So technically they had to be stories about the police or about fire or something where you, you had to show you required crossing a police line of some kind. Well, if you don't have a press pass, it's very hard to go to press conferences with the NYPD. In fact, it's just about impossible because they'll check for that. Um, if you wanna cover certain press conferences that the mayor holds, they ask for your press passes, not all, but certainly some they do. So if you're a young reporter trying to get a pass and you don't have a lot of clips, you wanna start reporting and have this to go around New York City, you're stopped in your tracks by this desk officer who has no expertise of any kind in journalism and who's just looking very sleepily at your at your clips and deeming them worthy or not. So, so the system was incredibly dumb. Um, I think one problem was reporters accepted it, you know, and I wrote the piece in 2016. A few of my colleagues tweeted it out, were excited about it, but for the most part, radio silence. You know, it, it's always, I think that's the that's often the problem with media. There's a lot of groupthink that goes into it. Um, you know, I think one reason why I'm more popular, honestly, with people not in media than with people in media is because I'm willing to call out this groupthink. I myself have fallen susceptible to groupthink. I'm not above it by any means, but it's a very real phenomenon in media where you know reporters are all tend to be around the same age. They tend to be the same politically. They tend to all live in the same neighborhoods. They tend to share the same values, the same worldviews, the, the, the same voting histories. You know, you'd be surprised you know, for a profession that like in theory should be the most skeptical and the most willing to argue, argue argument and actual debate over policy and practices is not really encouraged in real tight media circles you know it's almost it's very tribal um and and you feel a lot of pressure to go along with the tribe in part because these people could control your professional future right um there was a very good substack do you read freddie DeBoer's substack at all he's, he's pretty good he's con controversial guy um he, he's did you know he's had his has had his issues he's had severe mental issues, which he writes about, but he did a very good substack about, um, you know, media culture um, 
and 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 one of the great you know pressures of media culture is that it's a very precarious industry it's incredibly precarious industry as, as we know there are very few jobs very few writing opportunities and, and you know you're kind of you know unless you've risen to a certain level and i'm fortunate in that in, in some way i have you know you're kind of in, in like a fight for survival and in order to survive, you can't be blacklisted by editors. You can't be blacklisted by other reporters. You can't be shunned by them. You kind of have to be their friend. Either you have to be their friend in person or you have to be their friend on Twitter. You have to be their ally on Twitter. You have to share all the right jokes. You have to attack the right targets, right? Why are people every day who, 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 you know, who, who probably have like a lot of other things to think about why do they always tweet about Glenn Greenwald, right? Like I, I've had my differences with Glenn. I, I'm, I've, I think Glenn does a lot of great work. Sometimes his Substack's a little tedious to me, honestly, but I think he's also an important figure in journalism who, who must be reckoned with. But why every day you log on, there's something about Glenn, right? And is it because these people are so like deeply wrought about the idea of a man in Brazil producing journalism on Bolsonaro and then also fighting these culture wars on Substack? Like, are they, are they really that upset about, by it? I mean, I, I'd say probably not. They're signaling to their friends they hold the right viewpoints. I mean, I mean, I think a lot of it comes down to that. Some of it, yes, they're earnestly disagreeing with the Glenn Greenwald take, saying like, this is, this is stupid and here's why. I myself have disagreed with like many Glenn Greenwald takes, but right? Like, like, why are, why are they doing this? And I do think it is to virtue signal to their friends. And just to take it back to the NYPD point, I think, unfortunately, you know, it's one of those things you didn't really question, right? This like really bizarre policy. Well, that's the way it is, right? Well, that's how we got to do it. What's going to change it? And, and so I think finally, just with the passage of time, with the, I, I think the George Floyd protests and, and, and kind of the, the real um, adversarial, you know, turn the press took on the NYPD, which was very good. I mean, the NYPD deserves so much scrutiny. Um, and, and for a long time, with the exception of some people, media did not get it. I think with that turn post Floyd, you saw people questioning the practice of the NYPD handing out press passes. So my hope is that the next mayor, you know, come next year, will not be doing it through the NYPD anymore. And we will have closed, uh, closed this sorted chapter in, uh, in New York press history.